Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details. Welcome to the wide world of wrestling. My name's Simon Tackler. My co-host, Neil Walters. Neil, how's it going? I'm good. Just, uh, yeah, dealing with six more weeks of wrestling, apparently, because that's, that's all life's going to throw at us at the moment. But yeah, thank God we've still got this to watch because that's all I'm doing at the moment. Yeah, for us here in Melbourne, this is all we have to keep us entertained for the next few weeks. But that's okay because there is so much wrestling going on and we are going to be here covering it all. Uh, here on the Ozcast Network, make sure you subscribe to the podcast uh, for everything that's coming up. We've got you know pay per views to review, and this week we've got week two of the uh, Wednesday Night War doubleheader: Fighter Fest versus NXT's Great American Bash. Let's just get straight into it because these were both pretty big shows. Uh, should we go into Fighter Fest first? Yeah, well, I think we start Fighter Fest first because I think. Uh... I, I don't know. It's I think last week I gave the advantage to AEW. Yep. Uh, and I, th- I thought that they took it out. Uh, but this week I think it jumped ship and it was NXT. Um, that was uh, the better show for me overall. But it's it, black by an absolute bees because it was so close. I thought that both shows were good. Not great, but good. Um, so yeah, but I, I think that NXT was uh, had the had the wood over uh, AEW this week. All right. Well, we'll kick it off with the first match: Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page defeated Private Party. I thought this was one of the best matches of the whole night. I go up and down yeah. with Private Party, but when they're in a high stakes match like this, like that great one they had with the Young Bucks, you know, at the start of uh, Dynamite, this was mm. great. I think private party are only as good as their opposition personally. Okay. Um, I think you saw that last week with the, when they took on Santana and Ortiz, didn't think it was a great match. Uh, but then this week you got Omega and Paige who are just two veterans that are amazing at what they do. Um, and it just stepped everything up to a whole nother level. They could do a lot more. It was a lot more interesting for me. Um, it was a, a, about the same time uh, length as last week, but it felt like it went a lot quicker. Yeah, and I think Omega and Paige, I'm glad they've held off on, you know, the eventual split of the team because these matches the past two weeks just show that, you know, I want to see them wrestle everyone on the roster because these Mm. matches are great. Yeah, and look, the split is one of those things that has to happen when there's a crowd again. I know we keep talking about when there's a crowd, but you don't want to see Omega versus Paige um, unless it's a, um, you know, a, a... a street, like a street fight on the street done cinematically or something like that. You wouldn't want to see these two in front of, you know, 15 people at a, um, at an empty arena. You definitely want to see that at a, um, a WrestleMania type show for AEW, whatever that'll be in the future. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say they'll stay together for, for quite a long time. Um, and yeah, but yeah, when they do, it'll be a big, big event. Mm. Well, up next, speaking of big, we had Lance Archer, who is quite big, Taking on Joey Janela, who is quite small in comparison. Um, what did you think of this one? We were talking about Lance Archer last week, how the momentum he had with Cody sort of disappeared. And this is his first big match since against Joey Janela. Yeah, look, I, I thought it was a, uh, a decent match. I, I did think it went a little bit too long. Mm. Um, again, it got 11 minutes for what should have really been a squash match. Um, Jake Roberts is starting to get on my nerves a little bit. I look. Jake the Snake, you got to love him. I love his whole thing, but it's starting to get to the point where you're like, it's the same thing every match. So I'd, I'm interested to see what happens there between those two because it just didn't feel like they're on the same page. Um, he nearly, Jake the Snake, Robbers nearly cost him the match um, when he like went up to the side of the ring and Joe, Joey Janelli nearly picked up the um, picked up the win. So yeah, it's it's a tough one where Lance Archer goes from now because. You're like, well, does he go for the title? Because, you know, is, is, is that a match we, we want to see? Or does he just keep beating up people that are smaller than him? Mm. He's got a lot of potential despite his age. I feel like there's a lot Lance Archer could do. Um, mm. I don't know if him and Jake is going to last long. 
yeah, it doesn't feel yeah. like it's got legs anymore for whatever reason. It just feels off. Can we just talk about how fake Jack's teeth are too? You're gonna bring that He's up. got the whitest fake teeth <laughs> that I've ever seen. And every time he smiles, you just like those come out of your head every night for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like insane. he's smiling sometimes, even when he's not. He'll just be yeah. clenching his teeth, but they're so <laughs> fake. You're like, is he happy about this? He just looks happy about everything. Yeah. He looks like Lenny like... in The Simpsons when he gets a facelift <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> this is the oh, saddest exactly. day of my life. <laughs> or when um, Bart puts in Grandpa's teeth. Yeah, they're huge. Like when go, and they're huge. That's On the him. fan. We need to Photoshop that in. All right. I'll try and do that. It's great. Um, up next, it was a promo. Taz presenting Brian Cage with the FTW title. I like this. I know it's just a week <laughs> before the match, but I, I kind of like it. I love that Taz, Taz the Thumb was very... <laughs> I'm the only one saying that, too, just in case he wants to beat you up. Um, he... He said how prestigious that belt was. I remember that belt. I look and I'm like, hang on, wasn't Taz the only guy ever to hold that? And it was him and I think Sandman. I think Sabu, maybe. I feel like oh, it Sabu, was barely, Sabu, yeah, yeah, it was him and Sabu, him, and that's it. It went him, Sabu, back to him, and then that was it. And that was it. <laughs> He's saying how prestigious the belt is, how good it is, how like, oh, you know, no one recognized the belt. It's like yeah, because ECW didn't like didn't want a bar of it because it was just Taz's belt, and yeah. they were just trying to build it up to this like huge, big, awesome thing. Look, I think it's sick because Moxley should take that belt next week, and then Moxley holds that belt over him and is like, "I've got your belt." That's kind of cool. Oh, that's kind of fun. He beats Cage and just grabs the belt, and Taz can say, "Oh, this wasn't for the belt, brother." But Mox is yeah. like, no, I'm the baddest man on the planet, <laughs> yeah. son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of cool. I like that setup. Um, Do you think I Brian think... Cage is done, though, if he loses this match? Nah, there's no way they give the title to him. Brian Cage is just very one-dimensional. Or how they're playing him is very one-dimensional. He just looks like this big kind of, just a big dude with a, like, he's like a weird kind of Brock Lesnar thing, but without <laughs> the... Um, without anything else going on for him, look, it's it could be an absolute banger of a match next week. I'm I am I really looking could. forward to it. Yeah, because Mox Moxley can make anyone look good. So if it's an awesome match, um, I still can't see Moxley losing it because how do you how do you take the title off Moxley? He is the best thing that this company has really, except for Jericho. So I can't see him dropping it. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to more promos with Moxley and Taz. So if this feud keeps going, I'm all for it. It'll be good. Um, Oh, yeah. Up next, to me, the absolute highlight from both shows, this absolute mental eight-man tag, Butcher, Blade, um, you know, uh, Lucha Bros, Young Bucks, and FTR. This was wild. Literally all of the best uh, tag teams that, are in across all of the brands in the one uh, in the one go really. Um, it was uh, yeah the Young Bucks to me still are the absolute pinnacle of tag team wrestling. They make everyone look awesome. Um, it's not only about how good they are; it's just about how good they look. Everyone else uh, make everyone else look. Um, it uh, again. I, I know eventually on the same card you're going to get Omega versus Page and FTR versus the Young Bucks, and that in itself is so mouthwateringly good that that's that who do you what's the what's the main event there and that's how good it is you could have tag teams main eventing over someone like omega versus page um or even moxley because everyone cannot wait for that ladder matches between fdr and the young bucks you know cage matches the works like it's so it's so so good um and i loved that they lost and then they yeah. didn't set it up. They didn't like punch on or anything afterwards. I shook hands and then walked away and that was it. I was like, thank Christ that it's not just, um, oh, they lost. Then they start fighting and then we set it up for whatever the next pay-per-view is because that would have been so disappointing to do that straight away. Yeah, AEW is doing a good job of not paying things off right away. They're doing it the right way. You know, yep. not everyone has to be so irrational that they're like, oh my God, my partner punched me. I better jump yeah. him after the match. Everyone in WWE, their characters are very, you know, petty. They'll turn yeah. on someone after one miscommunication. So I like that. Yeah. 
um, drag it on a bit longer. But in terms of the match, some of these spots and some of the, the chemistry these guys had with each other was insane. And I know Butcher mm. and the Blade are sort of the, the least known team in this match, but they look great too. They opened a lot of eyes and they fit in. I think they've been benefiting the past few weeks with just being in the mix for whatever reason. It's good. Look, I, I love my old friend Andy Williams, seeing him get just better and better and better after every match. Like, it's so sick. Um, every single time he is in the ring, you just, again, he made the Lucha Brothers look really good in this. Like, uh, and he took a couple of huge spots, especially from FDR. Like, I think there was a po- point where Dax, like, um, suplex him onto the onto the ring side. It was just like, Jesus, that looks that looked hectic. So, mm. um, yeah, he's doing really good. Even the like the development guys is, uh, um, are pushing really hard and doing really well. So, um, yeah, 16, 16 and a half minutes didn't feel like sixteen and a half minutes at all. Not at all. I, I honestly, for whatever reason, I thought this was an elimination match. Turns out it wasn't. It was just one fall. But my God, this was the most fun sixteen minutes. That jump off the back to the outside Canadian Destroyer was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I was sitting on my own watching it and I made a sound out loud. Doesn't happen often watching (laughs) wrestling. I was like, what the fuck? He pile drives someone onto a group of people. I feel like there Mm -hmm. were heads colliding. That was just mental. Someone definitely got hurt, but that's what we need out of this. You need those huge spots. You're going to have eight people in one match. You've got to have huge spots all over it. And that's exactly yeah. what this was. And, and that spot didn't even feel forced or like, oh, yeah, they're on the outside. Yeah. Now they're waiting. I had no, like, out of all the things you were going to expect, you weren't expecting a Canadian destroyer on a group no. of people. No, yeah. you were expecting like a suicide dive or something like yeah. that. But yeah, nothing. No one, no, no one picked that. See, the Young Bucks, every time I'm thinking, oh, I'm over him. I don't know, man, that Christian AF shirt's a bit iffy. Then they do something like this. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, they're the best. Yeah, um, then we had Nyla Rose defeating two jobbers, for lack of a better term, just destroyed them. Mm. Um, yeah, and that was sort of it. Yeah, and then she what, she said that she was hiring a manager now. And you're like, who is that gonna manager going to be? Uh, the, the question was, who cares who that's going to be? Because that just makes zero impact on her character for me. Um, <laughs> You know who I like as a manager for her, though? I think Taz would be a good manager for her as well. She's yeah. sort of Taz-like. Yeah, and uh, look, that would refrain her from talking to her. And clearly on the mic, she isn't, isn't great. Um, she just didn't sound uh, that interesting. So, yeah, if you put her with Taz, maybe, you know, that's a, that's a little team up there. You could have some mixed tag team matches and such. Give um, her the FTW not? title. Yeah. Absolutely. It could be cool. She's like, I'm the yeah. uncrowned champ. No one's uh, brave enough to fight me, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, start bringing in the own, make, make, like a F, FTR women's belt. Just start making their own belts and go, well, we, we're the champions now. <laughs> Everyone's got a title. They're like, no, nah, I'm Without the winning anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, up next, I thought it was weird to go into a six-man tag after we just saw the most crazy eight-man tag. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. I'm sort of over the dark order. I've never been on board. Brody Lee came in. I tried caring. Now they've got Colt Cabana sort of mixed in. I like mm. SCU, but I couldn't... This wasn't bad at all. This was, like, pretty good, but I just, no, nah, couldn't care. It was skippable as hell for me. I just found myself not... This is this is the only match on the card, really, I wasn't overly interested in. Um, so, yeah, and especially I knew what was coming up. I'm like, oh, Jericho versus Orange. This is going to be great, so... Um, yeah, I think it was poorly booked doing a six man after an eight man because you just felt like you were say, seeing a similar thing again, yeah. but not as good. Yeah, it couldn't live up to it. And then finally, yeah. the main event, Chris Jericho versus Orange Cassidy. Uh, I don't think they taped this on the night when they claim they did because I swear, no. continuity issues. I saw Brian Pillman Jr. at the start of the show. He was wearing casual clothes on one side of the ring. In this match, though, yep. he was on the other side in a leather vest, like in his wrestling yeah. gear. But anyway, I picked up exactly the same thing. Yeah, it was weird, I think it, it was definitely definitely on separate nights. Um, yeah, look, this was for me. It was match of the night and close to match of both uh, both shows. Orange Cassidy just blew everyone out of the water. I don't think anybody expected 
this to go 18 minutes and to be unbelievably good. Um, I, Orange Cassidy is my favorite in, uh, like probably ex- except for Moxley, my favorite wrestler at the moment um, going around because everything he does is so good. It doesn't get old. Him just this casual, I don't give a shit wrestler into just someone who just can take a hit can put like just create incredible spots took chris jericho to the absolute limit a lot of people including myself would have said he should have won this that would have done a lot for him but i also like the fact that you know he, they can go again yeah they absolutely can and the thing is jericho hasn't lost many matches so i was unsure if they would let orange cassidy get one over him but he didn't need to mm. you know we've seen this before where the up and comer takes the veteran to the limit then the veteran just scrapes by. Chris Jericho did everything he could to make Orange Cassidy look like a star. Orange Cassidy is great. I'm glad they finally transitioned into him having matches like this, like the one with Pac a few months ago was awesome as well. Yeah. He's so good. People love him. You know, the character works. I thought they took so long to pull the trigger. I was starting to get over it. But then, yeah, once they ramped it up with him, man, Orange Cassidy's great. And Chris Jericho, we say it all the time, but... If he's not so top five all time, then yeah. I don't yeah. know what, what you could be basing it on. He just kills it. I would really, really like to see Orange Cassidy with a belt. Probably the TNT belt's the only, only option at the moment because um, him versus Moxley doesn't make any sense because two faces. But um, yeah, if once Cody does drop the belt, I say it goes to a heel and then you can get Orange Cassidy, take that belt because that would be so sick seeing him carry around a title just like, just holding on to it, dragging along the ground or like just putting it somewhere he's forgetting about it, like doesn't really care. I'd love to see him get a title soon. Well, that's almost perfect because Cody almost cares too much and he yeah. would be so offended that a guy who <laughs> barely cares beats him. You know, Cody's yeah. all about passion and drama and everything's epic. So imagine yeah. he couldn't, the one guy he couldn't beat is the guy who doesn't care. That could tip <laughs> Cody over the edge. Like that, that would be a great feud. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you know, maybe that's how you could turn Cody heel. Yeah. Um, because his character starting to, for me, is starting to get a little bit dated too. It's the same thing all the time. Um, so, yeah, maybe Cody turns heel against Orange Cassidy and you can have that as a match. That would be incredible. I think it'd be good. And before we yeah. move on to NXT, um, Fight for the Fallen has already taken shape. Like, this looks like a really good card as well. Um, yeah. We've got FTR versus the Lucha Bros, another dream match, and we're getting it next week. We're Huge getting match. Jurassic Express in a six man tag against the Elite. So, Omega and the Young Bucks, that's going to be a lot of fun. And of so course, weird, though. You've got face versus face there. Same thing. You've got the Elite versus Jurassic Express, where I, I love that AW are doing this. They don't, they don't care about face or heel. Just They're just going, this is two huge matches on a. Um, it's not even a pay per view, is it? It's just standard, um, oh, big show. Uh, standard TNT. So, yeah, why not do this kind of stuff? And I'd, I'd see something dodgy happening here, something weird um, between the Elite and Jurassic Express, someone running in or whatever. Um, but yeah, it looks interesting as hell to me. Yeah, and of course we've got uh, Cody Rhodes versus Sunny Kiss. That was announced for the TNT title. Sunny Kiss starting to get you know more of a run on Dynamite again. That could be a good match. And of course, yeah. yeah We've got Moxley and Cage. That should be a good show. NXT is going to have to pull out all the stops to compete against, you know, a third super show, basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, that is, that's, going to be, that's going to be incredible. Um, I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait for that one. Well, getting into NXT, I'm going to be honest. I couldn't get into this NXT show. Uh, Candice LeRae versus me in Street Fight. I, I couldn't even get into this match. It was fine. Everything was fine on this show. I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, look, I I thought that uh, I thought that this, it was a, it was a good street fight. I I really did enjoy it. Um, for especially what it was uh, this only the second ever women's street fight in NXT. I think they kept saying time and time again. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I I thought they they smashed it. Um, it was you know a good use of. Uh, weapons, the ending was great. Candice LeRae continues to impress me time and time again. So, yeah, I thought it was good. Kind of an interesting finish, though, because normally it's a bad guy who'll bring in the brass knucks and the good guy will use them against the bad yeah. guy. But this was the good guy bringing them in and it turned on them anyway. Yeah. You know, 
subverting our expectations, In, I guess. Interesting to see what it says on the Wikipedia page. So it says Tony Nice defeated Leon Ruff, but no time. And like, did it happen? And they showed it in highlights and they kept saying like, oh, it happened before the show. And then Bronson Reed came out and he was upset about it. So they had a match. So I don't know if we're counting that, but definitely Bronson yeah. Reed beat Tony Nice. And it's good to see the Aussie get some shine. Big Bronson Reed. He's very talented. Um, Big dude. Just getting a win like that. I like it. Don't need to see yeah. Tony Nice so often. He's fine. No. <laughs> yeah. Just that, that was a skippable match for sure. Yeah. And then up next, a match that, you know, Shawn Michaels was hyping up as like, oh, this one could steal the show. You know, watch it. Gargano versus Swerve Scott. It was good. No, but I don't Not know. I can't say anything more than that. Yeah. Look, it's, I, I'm agreeing with you too. It's like, I, I know I need to justify why I picked NXT over AW this week. It's simply because of how good the main event was. Okay. Like, for me, the only pay per view standard match out of all of them like I, that I would happily have main event a pay-per-view and feel like it was something epic was the main event from the show mm. um, I think that had that over anything AEW did um, and that's what I wanted and that's what I was looking for at the moment too so that's my justification of wanting this because I'm going to say this a lot of this NXT <laughs> card a lot of it was skippable that was one of the worst Gargano matches I've seen I wasn't overly interested in it um, I didn't see a reason for it either there wasn't to me. There wasn't a massive amount of build up, um, and you know Johnny versus Keith Lee to me is probably something coming up pretty soon, um, as he's looks like he's the only other guy that could probably take on Keith Lee that's fighting at the moment too. Yeah, well, they had a great match at In Your House. I can see them doing the rematch. You know, Johnny says yeah. he wants another shot. Um, we then had another... I feel like we had multi-man matches on, you know, across these shows. This one was the mm. worst of the bunch, and I like a lot of the guys in this. Breezango and Drake Maverick against El Legado Del Fantasma. The worst name in wrestling. <laughs> it's a <laughs> The mouthful. worst name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, by a mile the worst. Uh, Drake Maverick. He's just held on to his spot, obviously, and then they put him in a match like this. Mm. It's... So weird. Like, to me, Johnny Gargano versus Drake Maverick would have been sicker than this. I would have liked to have seen that. Um, something oh. a little bit more high risk and interesting. Because Give me Fandango versus Johnny Gargano. I love Fandango. Oh. He's my favorite guy in this match. Like, he's so good. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, wasn't, wasn't interesting. Went for too long and, again, pretty skippable. And I'm confused about these Legalo Del Fantasma guys. I know they're like, we're fighting for Lucha Libre for everyone to treat it with respect. One of the dudes isn't even Mexican. <laughs> Joaquin <laughs> Wilde isn't Mexican. Yeah. He's Filipino. Yeah. And that was always his thing in TNA. They're like, oh, Zima Ion, you know, he's Filipino. And, and now all of a sudden he's like fighting for Lucha Libre heritage. I don't know. Maybe I'm like, I don't understand the culture. But to me, that's... I thought they were taking the piss. I really <laughs> did. I thought they were absolutely taking the piss. And I was like, hang on. This doesn't make any sense at all. Um, yeah. When oh, they like came the, out, I was like... Like the FBI in ECW, how they always had like a yeah. white guy or whatever who wasn't Italian. Maybe that's the joke. <laughs> We're messing Full up. Full-blooded Italians and one definitely wasn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. Up next, we had another women's match. This time it was a squash. Mercedes Martinez defeating Santana Garrett. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I I'd like to see Mercedes take on Io Shirai. That's that's a that's a good match to me. Yeah. Um, obviously, when someone has a close to main event uh, spot on a card, uh, obviously second before last, and then they it's a squash. It's indicating that that's going to be next up for uh, for a title run. So yeah, I could see probably Martinez versus Shirai coming up pretty soon. Yeah, it'll be a good fight. And we also got the yeah. high package for Tegan Knox and Io Shirai. We were speculating, were they going to hold that match off? Maybe wait till, you know, the title isn't on a face. But I guess they're doing it because Io Shirai is sort of, you know, in the middle, a bit of a tweener. But yeah, Tegan Knox, Io Shirai, good video package. It'll be a good match for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I was hanging for it. Um, I Yeah, I, I think that's going to be awesome. Yep. Uh, and then we got Keith Lee, Adam Cole, both titles, epic TNA, uh, sorry, NXT style over the top takeover match. Huge, insane. Uh, the best match of the last two weeks for me by an absolute mile. 
Um, Keith Lee is just so, it's so well-deserved seeing him get both belts. Uh, that's obviously the end for Adam Cole for NXT. I think he goes up to Raw or SmackDown now. That's 99% of the time that's what happens when someone holds a belt for, you know, over a year or a very long time with NXT, they drop it, they leave. Like that's, mm. it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, Raw or SmackDown both need Adam Cole right now. Like imagine if he goes to SmackDown, you have Jeff Hardy versus Adam Cole. Holy shit. Um, you have Daniel Bryan versus Adam Cole. Holy shit. Like they can just kick off where they left off really. Um, if alternatively you see him go to Raw, um, you know, AJ Styles versus Adam Cole. <laughs> well, AJ's yeah, on down. SmackDown though. Oh, sorry, SmackDown. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. He's, he fits, he's traded. Yeah, yeah, he got traded for Dolph Ziggler. Well, Dolph versus Adam Cole. That'd be good. Yeah, Dolph versus Adam Cole. Um, Drew and Adam Cole could, would be very good too. Oh, like, and you go. This is take, and a lot of time they do that. They pair them up with who they fought with on NXT. So maybe people that don't watch NXT get a little bit of a yeah. oh, how how good is this? Like, and they could just repeat matches that they've already done. Um, so yeah, Drew versus Adam Cole would be huge. Adam Cole versus uh, Alistair Black. They had that insane oh. street fight on Takeover <laughs> years ago. Give me that oh. again. Adam Cole yeah. is a guy though. I don't think fans should expect that he goes to Raw and SmackDown and gets to the main event right away. I think he's going to be working against his size. That's just how it is. Adam Cole, yeah. you know, isn't the biggest guy. They can tell me he's six foot and two hundred pounds all they want. It's not true. And I think you're going to see that when he gets to the It looks tiny. Like, yeah. you put him next to Keith Lee, and Keith Lee is a Brock Lesnar size, and he looks tiny. Yeah. So, so but, but that's you know. good. He'll win him over with his, you know, not just in-ring talent. I really think Adam Cole's strength is on the mic, which is going to take him yeah. further than what most people can get to on the main roster. That dude can talk. Yeah. He's great. Absolutely. Yeah, but literally, we've just named like five or six dream matches uh, with Adam Cole. So I'm I'm stoked he dropped it. I'm stoked it's to Keith Lee because now Keith is going to, I think he'll hold both of those belts for at least a little while. Um, it's interesting. Uh, they got a 20-minute match. It was just an epic, like, it was the perfect ending to, to, uh, to Adam Cole's time at NXT. And it is pretty clear that he's gone. So, yeah, I, I think everyone's a winner out of this match. Yeah, and a good time for Adam Cole to leave too because the rumours were that his contract is up in August. So they can have some fun with it, taking him, take him off TV for a few weeks and mm. just speculate, oh, which brand is Adam Cole going to? You know, he's left... Or is he leaving? Yeah, like, is he is leaving? he leaving altogether? Yeah. You know, maybe just drop in a couple of AEW rumours that no one's going to believe hmm. and then he comes back and smashes someone on, on Raw or SmackDown. That's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, he's in a group. He's in a good spot. Even if he is legitimately bargaining for a better contract, he should be free to do so. Yeah, I, see, that's the thing. If it's very obvious to me that he is, um, he is staying because otherwise, why would he drop the belt? Like, if he drops the belt now um, before his contract's up, I think if he was going, they would have kept him on NXT until the absolute last minute. Mm. Uh, and then make him drop the belt and then he goes. Um, but because he's staying with WWE, that's, yeah, he drop it, drops it now. Then he can go straight to Raw and SmackDown and start making a name for himself. Yeah, I think so. Him and Rey Mysterio, that's another one off the top of oh. my head. So many good matches. He could, he could fight pretty much anyone. Um, you know, you, maybe him and Strowman too. Take out a big guy, like straight away. That'd be cool. Well, with the um, Undisputed Era... He can. Yeah. If they all go, then why not? So that's the Wednesday Night Wars part two of these head-to-head shows. Next week, we're getting Fight for the Fallen from AEW. We'll see how NXT follows up Keith Lee becoming the double champ. And next week, we're also going to have to preview the horror show at Extreme Rules. There is a lot to talk about. That's going to be a wild show by the sounds of things with gimmick matches galore. Yeah, like why the hell is it called Horror Show? Um, I, look, one thing I want to say about that match is if they don't do the three faces of Wyatt, 
they're blowing it because I th- and I think that's what's going to happen. But mm. yeah, we'll talk much more in depth about that next week. Yeah, it's going to be some real silliness. But until then, make sure you subscribe. Stay up to date. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, Google Podcasts. We're everywhere on the OzCast Network. Just search for the Wide World of Wrestling or OzCast Wrestling and you'll find us there. So until then, Neil, talk to you later. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.